I try not to be. How's that for an answer? I am not a fool. I know how evil these people are. I understand how evil this government is. I understand how evil the left is. They'd like to kill 30 million of us if they could. Read some of their writings from the 60s. Read what Bill Ayer said. If you think they wouldn't line you up and gas you or have you shot, you're mistaken. You're mistaken, my friend. Now, you as a teacher know what I'm referring to. You know that 30 million Chinese died under Mao Zedong to make his cultural, uh, re cultural revolution a little more uh, c complete, didn't it? So what stands between those of us who are standing between a uh, complete and total loss of this nation? What stands between them wiping us out? I don't know. Do you? Well, I think the answer lies within each one of us to stand up in our own way because we don't have the kind of audience you do on a daily basis, but we do have others that we influence, and it takes courage because you may lose friends, you may lose your job, your financial resources, but the answer really li lies within each one of us to choose the right path. How is it that we see thugs, absolute street thugs, being regaled as leaders you know who Black Lives Matter is run by. You know what they are. Obama's using them as an army. Obama's using them as his brown shirts to intimidate the entire country. And people sit here like dummies, watching it go on in front of their eyes. They won't say a word. They're intimidated by the left. Oh, you can't say it. What do you mean you can't say it? Where is it illegal to say what is, what is clear? Where is it illegal to speak your mind in this country? That's there is a travesty because uh, all lives matter, and we have to be colorblind. Uh, each one of us is a unique individual, I believe, created uh, by God. And the Black Lives Matter is an absolute sham. It, uh, people are being used by it. It just breaks my heart to see people led by such a thing. Can you imagine that over the weekend at a funeral for a slain cop, black, by the way, killed by a black thug, this this thing this director of violent films taranto whatever his name is led the black lives matter mobs on a march against police calling police thugs and murderers can you believe that in this day and age you would go ahead with a march like that i never thought i'd live long enough to see some of the things that i'm seeing to be truthful uh it, it's incredible and it, it, you're on the topic of race relations to see that go backwards from a president who uh, uh, preaches the gospel of equality, it's just outrageous. Yes, he set race relations back as far as he set relations with Russia back about 50 years. He is the most destructive president in American history, but you wouldn't know it because of the drug addicts in the media who look so ever who look so clean on television, don't they? I want to ask you a loaded question because you're such a thoughtful individual. Uh, and I don't know if I should even do it. I'm a little dizzy right now and slightly tired from the stress of waiting for this day because of the launch of the book tomorrow and my hopes that people will go out and buy the book in droves and buy one and get one free for a neighbor. Uh, do you think that somewhere within the inner circle of this evil government they have discussed eliminating their opposition in this country? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I will say this, though, that things are happening that I never thought would happen. Now, I'll give you an example with Fox News. You know, they, uh, with Bill O'Reilly, I was very disappointed because Hillary clearly uh, told a very uh, significant lie having to do with the Benghazi, the videotape controversy, and they watered that down. And th th it really scares me because there are certain individuals that I trusted, you know, that uh, they're reaching that fork in the road. They're not taking the right path. Well, because of Bill O'Reilly, I'm banned on Fox News. That's the best that I can figure out. Years ago, I, pulled out, I put out a book called The Political Zoo. And I wrote a scathing critique, a really a, a satire on him, going all the way back to the Lufa scandal that they hushed up and bought off the girl and all that. Uh, according to all the news reports at the time. Bill O'Reilly has been opposed to me ever since, and an enemy, and I know he controls the network, and as a result, I've been banned for many, many years. But I'm not the issue. If you watch the politics of Fox, when have you last seen them come out strongly against the invasion of America? Have you ever seen it? Well, I've seen a watered-down version. I think that out of the main networks, they're the closest to the truth. But I, I, I do wonder whether many of them have sold out. You know, they'll take it to a certain level and then back off. And I've been very disappointed in that. And that's why I'm one of the reasons why I was moved to call you, because I think you're really 
I, I think you're an individual that has sacrificed much. You talked about, you know, suffering depression occasionally and, and feeling lonely. You're a very transparent individual. And and that that's not easy to sacrifice the comforts of life. And I don't mean just... No, that's <laughs> right. That is right. There's a great price to be paid for being an independent uh, uh, voice because even people who agree with you will avoid you, whether you know it or not, because they're afraid of being shunned by their own circles. You know that. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm not complaining because I want to go back to something that's very important. If people think I'm lamenting any of it, I am not. I've had a wonderful life and God's been very good to me, but I will read one one line. Laugh and the world laughs with you, weep and you weep alone. My mama used to say that to me as she was crying her heart out over something that I don't want to go into again. But she cried every day of her life when I was a little boy. And I had to learn to entertain her because of that. And she would tell me that she was basically getting rid of the tears inside the house so that she can go outside and not cry to her neighbors over her heartbreak, her heart, her broken heart. But, uh, you know, all I'm saying is she told me, don't tell the world that you're unhappy. Don't walk around with tears because everyone will avoid you. You know, laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. It's why I learned to be, quote, funny. Funny, funny, funny. My friend, thank you for listening and thank you for joining the the program today. And a book goes out to you. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. It is the Savage Nation. Now, what else can I say to you today that I have not already given you? What do you need to know? Is there anything you'd like to know? I mean, have I clarified my statement that we've lost the battle and not the war? I know that the blogosphere was alive with the sound of music. Once Drudge linked the story, Savage says we've lost the battle. The blogosphere went crazy. And people were saying Savage has given up. He's a defeatist. And I've tried to tell you that we've lost one battle after another, but we have not lost the war. And I've tried to give you an example of in World War II how close the USA was to losing World War II, but was it not for a number of factors, including the will of the people to fight, to continue fighting, even though we had lost one battle after another, we would have lost the war. I also told you that it was sabotage in the war plants of Germany that stopped the production of Germany's jet fighters that could have turned the course of the war in their favor. But that even slaves in factories in Germany in World War II were willing to fight as a form of resistance against Hitler. They didn't give up. Just They were slaves. They lost their freedom. And here they were slaves in a factory, watched around the clock, and they didn't give up. They sabotaged the war plants. They slowed down the production of the ME-262 and the JG-7. And had it gone uh, into the air earlier, it would have knocked all of the air, uh, Allied aircraft out of the sky. The German jets could have stopped Allied bombing of Germany. They could have easily escorted bombers to wipe London off the map. But uh, they were stopped by the resistance of slaves in their factories. So when you think it's hopeless, you're not a slave. You're a free man. You're a free woman. You have the power to talk about what you see going on, whether it's on a supermarket line, a book club. I don't know, wherever it is, wherever you are, a family gathering, a party. You don't have to beat people up. You can talk about it quietly. You can do it with a smile. But you need the information. You need the facts. And they'll say, what are you talking about? What are you, a right-wing nut? So if you read and you learn, whether it's from my book, Government Zero, which I hope you'll look at, or from blogs, or from articles. Pick one article. Carry one article around on one issue, like global warming. Xerox the chapter. Zero science in my book. Get it from somewhere else. If you have educated friends who are liberal idiots, talk about Lysenko. See how smart they are. See, many of them are very glib. They're good with the quick retort and the quick remark. They're all, sh they're all entertainers. Every liberal thinks that they're an entertainer. They all think they're Larry David with the one-liner. But you can stop them and say, well, you're such an expert on uh, global warming. Do you know who Lysenko was? They'll, they'll never heard of him. Or if you read the book, you'll find out that there's a 
almost irrefutable single fact that completely denudes their arguments. A single fact that denudes their entire, entire warming argument. The Vostok ice samples. One fact can detract them. And the glib liberal will suddenly have to listen to you. You don't have to do it with anger or hatred. Do it with facts. Do it with intelligence. Do it with dignity. But for God's sakes, just do it. you got to arm yourself. It's a long time until the election in 2016. It's going to be Trump versus Hillary. Don't you want to swing the vote towards Trump? Don't you want to awaken the sleeping giant? Don't you want to awaken all of the women who think that they know everything they need to know about everything? Don't you want to educate people? Well, I'm giving you the bandolier with all of the ammunition. And government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. That's the bandolier. There's your ammo. You're, you're, the, you're the operative. I'm appealing to you. I'm a community organizer today. I'm a community organizer. I'm going to do what the left has done. I'm organizing you through the mass media. How's that? We're going to use their methods to take our country back. Okay? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. What we need to do is change the lock on our back door because the uh, invasion is ongoing. We need to do more than change the lock on our back door with Mexico. We need to seal the back door. We need to seal the back door with our National Guard and our military. We need to pull our military out of Korea and put the military on the border with Mexico. That's only the beginning. And as I said to you, the big story is we lost the battle, not the war. And you've got to stop reading just headlines. What's required now is, is work, hard work on your part. Many of you figure it'll all work out in the end. You figure, look, I can't do anything about it. Well, take a look at, look at what that's gotten you. Say, oh, I can't do anything about it. Take a look at what Obama's doing to this nation because you've been neutralized. I haven't been neutralized. I'm still fighting. The flames still fly out of my soul every day. Can anyone listening to this show say to me that you know men 30 years younger than me who have more fire than I do for this nation? Tell me who they are because I'll tell you who they are. You don't know who they are. They're in Afghanistan. They're in Iraq. They're in places we don't even know. They're soldiers. They're sailors. They're Marines. They're assassins for the CIA. They're the ones with the real fire. You need to do something. We almost lost World War II. I'm trying to tell you the story. Did you know we almost lost World War II? Did you know that that almost happened? Yes, we're losing battle after battle. But we can turn it around. There were many times in World War II that we could have lost the war. And many of you wouldn't be here had we lost the war. Had the Eddies who lie on the ground right now not given their lives to beat Hitler, you'd be a lampshade or a bar of soap. You need to stand up and fight this leftist, communist, Islamist invasion. I want to talk again now about the war. Many of you have misinterpreted the Drudge headline. It's the biggest headline of the year. And it says, with the cover of my book, Government Zero, Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. And you want to hear what happened as a result of the Drudge headline? First of all, I want to thank Matt Drudge. I want to thank Breitbart. They stand out amongst the entire conglomeration, along with World Net Daily and Newsmax. But today, I got to thank these people. I mean, they're not personal friends of mine. I never thought it would happen, but they've shown that they put the nation above petty politics. They've shown that they know how critical the times are. And so Drudge puts up the book, and it says, Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. Guess what's happened? People network over the world saying, Savage says we've lost the war. Savage has given up. Talk show hosts are saying, we've given up. They're copying my message as though they said it, trying to co-opt me. That's right. That's what you'd expect from copycats. They're suddenly saying what I said, making believe they said it, and they missed the whole mess because they only read headlines. Do you realize that part of the problem is that people don't even read articles anymore? They only read headlines. They don't even read beyond the headline. So it says, Michael Savage declares, we've lost the battle. Right away. 
right, left, center, they're screaming, Savage, conservative says we've lost, we've lost, they've lost, hurrah. I didn't say we lost.